Well, Heidi Ho, this is Scott over at ReadySquirrel.com, and this will be the second time today that I've done this video, How Long Will Emergency Water Last? Um, I recently moved from the Northeast to uh, the Florida Panhandle. Actually, like over the last week, I've been going back and forth. So anyway, my computer system was, you know, I had to reset it up, and <clears throat> somehow my software, my screen capture software got messed up so I ended up um, recording this entire video I don't know it was like or a podcast whatever you want to call it for like 40 minutes with no sound so <laughs> here we go the second time let's see how this works out for us okay so this is uh, again this is Scott with Ready Squirrel uh, I deal with subjects uh, you know surrounding home preparedness uh, emergency preparedness uh, prepping uh, SHTF WROL Things like that. I find it interesting. I'm a huge fan of zombie novels, but I'm also kind of practical, so the, the two things uh, come together. Um, I like to use... Uh, well, anyway, let's move on. I digress. How long will emergency water last? Plan to store water for emergencies like power outages, hurricanes, or other natural disasters. Storing water before an impending catastrophe is one of the most important things you can do for your family's survival. Without clean water, there is no life. Uh, following is the information I researched for my family's uh, for my family's water storage, and I hope it helps you plan for your emergency water needs. How long will emergency water store? Uh, when I first uh, did the research on this question um, for SEO and that kind of stuff. I was thinking along the lines of like how much water do I need for X amount of days for X amount of people. So I kind of messed this sentence up here. What I mean by how long will my emergency water store is just like is just that. It's basically shelf life. How much emergency water should I store? <coughs> I seem to always be going back to and we all always go back to the FEMA number of a minimum of one gallon of water a day per person for three days. Um, I think ideally you'll have at least two weeks of water stored and hopefully even more than that or have a way to filter it. Little side note, occasionally Florida, Florida is affected by severe weather systems like hurricanes, floods, or other natural disasters. And in their wake, people can be left without electrical power and or running water for days or weeks at a time. So... Uh, in my the area I lived in in New Jersey, we had a hurricane. That we weren't even like fully hit by it because I was inland. I lived in the north uh, west part, Sussex County. <coughs> Excuse me. I was not uh, not originally from New Jersey. I actually uh, originally from Nebraska. Lived all over. Lived out of the country. Lived in the country. And we ended up there, uh, lived there for six years. Like I said, just recently moved down here. But anyway, before we moved there, right before we moved there, a hurricane caused quite a bit of damage. The East Coast has a really, um, tender is not a good word. It has an electrical system that is extremely, extremely easily upset. Everything's above ground. And if we have strong winds of 30 miles an hour, it's not unusual for the power to go out. I, I bet our power probably goes out 20 times a year. And that may be for 10 minutes and it may be for eight hours. You just never know. Anyway, during this one storm, uh, people were without power for two weeks. And most of the people where I live are on wells. <coughs> Excuse me. And the wells were not set up for solar or hand pumping. So if you didn't have a generator to pump water, uh, you basically had to go back to pioneer days and slug water where you could find it. So one gallon of water per day per person. My my uh, my point is for three days. Yeah, you can you can manage using half that for hydration and half that for personal hygiene. But if you have if you get you know if something kicks in, SHTF and you've got some long term survival scenarios like a couple weeks or even seven days. <coughs> excuse me. One gallon of water just is going to be really uncomfortable. Yeah, you'll survive, but it uh, you'll survive. Definitely not a, a position of comfort, though. Uh, interesting fact, the United States Geological Survey estimates that the uh, average American uses 80 to 100 gallons of water uh, per day for domestic use. <clears throat> that seems crazy to me. Like, you take a shower, you flush the toilet, I don't know, four or five times, I'm guessing. 
where's the rest of that water coming from? I'm guessing it has has something to do with um, like using clothes washing machines, dishwashers, maybe irrigating lawns, uh, maybe um, uh, water supply for pools. I'm not sure. That is a lot of water, 80 to 100 gallons. So if you're uh, if you're only keeping uh, one gallon of water per person per day, just know that that's not a lot, a lot of water. Uh, how long will uh, emergency water last? The maximum shelf life of stored emergency water is 2 to 50 years. Water doesn't actually go bad, but over time it becomes contaminated with uh, biological or chemical agents and needs to be cleaned before it's safe to drink. Water shelf life depends basically on three factors. <clears throat> the environment where emergency water is stored. So if you store it in a cool, dry location, just like all the other food stuffs, uh, emergency food supply, uh, cool, dry location without severe fluctuations in temperature. Uh, just as an example, water stored in a, a cold, dark basement is going to last quite a bit longer than water stored in the trunk of a hot car or a hot garage. Um, Another factor that's going to determine how long the water will remain uncontaminated is uh, the container that's used to store the water. Clear glass or plastic exposed water to light, which increases the speed of oxidation. If plastic is used to store water, it should be UV resistant and food grade or it will leach chemicals into the water. <clears throat> Cleanliness and proper processing of bulk water and equipment for storage. So if water goes into the container with contaminants or if the water isn't handled in a sterile environment, it will reduce the shelf life. Under ideal storage conditions, you can expect the following shelf life for your stored emergency water. Hermetically sealed metal cans, you're going to get 20 to 50 years. Uh, you're going to have to pay extra for that. So just consider that. <clears throat> I wouldn't want um, my entire water emergency water source to be purchased uh, canned survival water. It's, it would be super expensive and it would probably only be good just for hydration. You wouldn't be using that for um, hygiene or sanitation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, store bo plastic water bottles. They're not terrible. Uh, you know, you get two plus years out of them. You just have to rotate. Uh, after two years, water will still be good, but it may not taste good due to carbon dioxide dissolution and chemical leaching from bottles. Um, 55 gallon propylene, uh, polypropylene barrels. Those are the blue barrels with the bung hole in the top that you can screw on. Uh, you'll get five years out of those plus if adequately treated, clean, stored, and handled. Um, ideally you'll check your water annually. It's challenging to keep water clean though. So, I mean, ask anybody who homebrews and they'll tell you how hard it is to not contaminate water. Um, if you go with uh, FEMA's suggestion, uh, it's kind of the less expensive uh, method of using um, food grade kind of on hand containers that you have, just basically pouring unprocessed tap water um, and storing it in metal or glass. You're going to get six months out of that, so you'd have to rotate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to the Federal Emergency Manage uh, Management Agency, uh, one gallon of water will last one person one day in an emergency. And half of that water is for hydration and one half is for hygiene and sanitation. That's such a hard, fast rule at this point that it's, it sounds like I, just hearing myself say it again um, kind of drives me crazy. But then I forget that there are people out there that may be watching this and they're just starting out. So you're looking at for three days is the minimum suggested. Three gallons of water per person for natural disasters and emergencies. And that is not a lot of water. Um, 1.6 gallons of water is gone if you flush the toilet once. So I've got a chart down below, and you can use that to figure the minimum amount of water you need to store uh, from 1 to 365 days based on the length of the catastrophe and the number of people in the group. I'm not going to focus on that too much. It's pretty simple. But uh, three days, one person, three gallons, two people, six, uh, three people, nine, and so on. And you can just run the numbers out. Uh, so I suggest you have a minimum of 14 days of water on hand, and that's this number here. Water requirements are based on FEMA's one gallon of water per day per person. Uh, storage, suge uh, storage suggestion from one day to 365 days for one to six people. Uh, interesting fact, the minimum 365-day water supply for six people is 3,285 gallons of potable water. 
<clears throat> which is equivalent to, and I'm constantly amazed at the weight of water, equivalent to 27,396 pounds of water weight. So you won't be carrying that out in a bug out bag. One gallon of water per day is not a lot of water. It's redundant, but I can't say it enough. If you flush the toilet once, you've used approximately 1.6 gallons. You can tell I've done this because I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Ten steps to storing drinking water from a chlorinated public water source. Store this emergency water before municipal water is contaminated. Um, this is a simple, low-cost method of doing it. Wash one liter plastic pop or juice bottles in soapy water. Sanitize containers by pouring one teaspoon of unscented household bleach into one gallon of water. Uh, so basically, clean them with soap and water, clean them with bleach, or sterilize with bleach. Uh, rinse the bottles out, fill them with faucet water that's chlorinated, cap the bottles, and then label them. And as I noted up above, you're going to get about six months out of that. Uh, this is not something that you want to plan on doing for long-term uh, survival, but this is a, an affordable way to make sure that you have enough water on you know uh, on hand for three days five steps to boiling uh, water when city water is contaminated uh, bring water to a rolling boil for three minutes let it cool pour, pour, pour boiled water into disinfected water containers or a clean pan with a lid um, and you can use the bleach disinfection uh, method above if you want to know a little bit more about like the ratios of bleach to water and disinfection uh, you can um, follow this link. Can Clorox be used to purify drinking water? It's pretty comprehensive. Uh, I talk about uh, not just um, unscented household bleach ratios, but also uh, hydroxy, oh, I almost said hydroxychloroquine. I've heard that so much on the news lately. Uh, pool shock, pool shock uh, ratios. Um, the, one, the downside of boiling water and a, a good reason to have a bunch of water on hand is boiling water will not remove chemicals in contaminated mun municipal or well water. So if you're filling your containers after the fact, after groundwater from a hurricane, after the water is contaminated, um, unless you have a reverse osmosis system or one of the other methods which I talk about down below to remove the chemicals, you'll be able to clean all the biological agents out if you've got, if you can boil, if you can use um, uh, bleach. But the problem with that is it won't remove chemicals. That's why you want to have water on hand prior to anything happening because you just don't know what's going to happen with the groundwater. Does water go bad? No, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't ever go bad, but it does get contaminated. And uh, I didn't, for some reason, I, it took me a while to get this, but <clears throat> water does not go bad. It gets contaminated. Um, so if you have a 55-gallon a, a drum of water and it's chemical free going in and biologically uh, and free of biological um, contamination going in and then you store it and it gets biologically contaminated because you didn't follow like the clean processes use bleach to clean things and stuff and you got something in there well you can still use that water and you're taking it out and you know there's no chemicals in there see so you have a water source that you can filter you can boil and you know that neither neither one of those processes work for groundwater contamination if it's chemicals. So even if that water needs to be processed on the back end, it's still going to be a water source that you, that you can drink. Whereas uh, I read an article uh, not too long ago on a hurricane that hit um, Houston. And there's a ton of fracking. There's a lot of oil industry there, a lot of heavy machinery, a lot of chemical processing. There was a ton in specific areas, there was a ton of chemicals in the water after a hurricane hit, and I mean it was like really bad. Um, so if you had if you had waited to fill your 55 gallon drums until after the hurricane hit or after the groundwater came in, you would be dealing with water again, unless you had the systems in place like reverse osmosis. You would be dealing with water that you would not have the ability to clean. Okay, so. I'm beating a dead horse here, but I, I, it's just, I don't know. At some point, the light went on for me when it comes to, does water go bad? No, it doesn't go bad. It gets contaminated. And there's different kinds of contamination. And if you have the standard methods of decontaminating water, like boiling, bleach, 
or uh, filtration, you can get rid of the biological agents. You will, most people, the average person, will not have the ability to get rid of chemicals in their water. Okay, interesting fact, the water we drink today is the same water that has been on the planet for 5 billion years. That kind of goes back to, does water go bad? Well, if we're drinking the water that's been on the planet for 5 billion years, we know that water doesn't go bad. Again, uh, it just gets contaminated. I, this is amazing to me. 5 billion years. Some of, the old, some of the water on our planet is older than our sun. That's like almost unbelievable. Does commercially bottled, bottled water go bad? Uh, commercially bottled water doesn't go bad, but the bottles that, that they are in does go bad. And this is kind of, there's not a lot of really specific information on this. It's almost like people don't want to, or groups don't want to take on the liability. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, considers bottled water to have an indefinite shelf life as long as it is stored appropriately, unopened in a properly sealed container. Also, it must be packaged according to current good manufacturing practice regulations enforced by the FDA. So because there's a little bit of controversy regarding the bottles shedding uh, chemicals into your water, I think a good rule of thumb is just make sure you're rotating your water, your bottled water, um, your store-bought wa uh, bottled water. Make sure you're rotating it every two years. And if you guys drink water like we do, it, that's, a, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, say here, plastic and water bottles may leach chemicals into the water if the plastic breaks down. Plastic leaching is a controversial subject without hard, fast answers. Um, I got ahead of myself again. To be safe, store bottles in a cool location out of the sunlight and rotate so bottles are no more than two years old. Note, the FDA does not require manufacturers to have an expiration date on bottled water, but some do. Manufacturers may also put a best by date so the consumer is drinking water when it tastes fresh. Nine things that may cause emergency water to go bad or contamination. Time, bottles will begin to break down over time, shedding chemicals. Um, high temperatures, if you, uh, if you put plastic bottles, this is kind of an issue with me and when I lived in Arizona is uh, keeping emergency water in your vehicle. I mean, it, it would get, I mean, it would, some days it would be 115 degrees outside your car. You could literally, and I'm not making this up, you could literally fry an egg on the hood of your car. So plastic bottles will shed chemicals when introduced to high temperatures of 125 degrees Fahrenheit plus. So if it's 115 degrees out, you're probably your inside of your car is probably getting uh, over 200 degrees inside just because of the uh, greenhouse effect. So don't store water in a hot garage or car if you have the option because high temperatures can contaminate your water. Dirty water, this seems kind of straightforward, but storing water containing chemical or biological impurities before purification or filtration. So you're putting dirty water into your uh, blue barrels. No, you wouldn't do this on purpose, but even municipal water can sometimes be um, spiked with chemicals and you don't know it. <clears throat> uh, you can contaminate items like pumps, your hands, bung wrenches, um, or the water could be filtered and clean and then you uh, you get it dirty when you're processing it and putting it into your barrels so disinfect your water purification equipment and storage before using it to store water carbon dioxide dissolution this really isn't contamination but it is like a, a flavor issue when all of the oxygen is out of water it doesn't taste good and there's an easy fix for this uh, carbon dioxide dissolves into stored water increasing acidity and giving it an off taste so you can resolve this carbonization by oxygenating the water, which is merely pouring water back and forth between clean containers. You're oxygenating it by moving the water back and forth, basically. And that will improve the flavor and uh, help the water not st uh, taste stale. Improperly sealed or stored containers allow contaminants into the storage container through leaching or spills. You know, if you've, if you've got your blue barrels on the floor in your basement like I did before, and then you have... Uh, let's say some paint solvent sitting next to it. Then you have some flooding in your basement, which I had on several occasions. Not not enough to, to be that bad, but I did have water coming in uh, due to a seal on a window. That water can get on the floor. It can surround the uh, paint uh, can or the paint solvent that's on the floor, and then it can transfer that through the plastic into your water. So just be aware of that. That's why you, you see a lot of things that say get your water storage up off the ground. 
And uh, blue, the blue polypropylene plastic can also have a chemical reaction with stuff in the concrete. Or so they say. I haven't actually personally experienced that. Water storage containers aren't food grade. You all know that. I mean, if you put if you store your water in PVC and it's gonna shed chemicals that aren't good for you. So make sure that your containers are food grade. If you're reusing containers, like uh, uh, say um, Coke bottles, you know that's food grade because you just drank the Coke, it had food in it or uh, a food grade drink. All you have to do is you have to make sure that you get the bottle extremely clean because sugar is a good food for bacteria. So if you don't get that bottle clean, then you're kind of starting out at a disadvantage for having non-contaminated water. Most of the uh, the uh, professional grade is not a good word. Most of the the water storage containers that you purchase specifically for long term storage are going to be in uh, uh, blue uh, polypropylene, and we talk a little bit about those down below. Uh, chemicals and solvents store your water storage away from chemicals. Again, redundant. <clears throat> Tip: When storing water, keep a bleach solution close uh, bleach solution close to water storage vessels. So they're handy for disinfecting everything that comes into contact with water. A cup of household bleach to one gallon of water is the ratio suggested by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for uh, disinfection, uh, disinfectant cleaning. I actually use a spray bottle and just keep it next to my water processing area. And that way I can just spray everything. It's a lot easier. How can I tell if my emergency water supply is bad? A water that is safe to drink will be clear with no flavors, off flavors or smells. Um, there are exceptions to this, but the only way to be truly sure is if you test the water. Five signs for your uh, five signs your emergency water supply is not safe to drink. Uh, your water is cloudy. The water smells like fish, metallic, or like rotten eggs. And there are exceptions to this. I remember uh, when I was growing up, my grandparents had a cabin on a lake in uh, Minnesota, and the water, uh, the water to the cabin was all coming right out of the lake. It smelled like fish, and we all drank it. But uh, when in doubt, don't drink it. These, are, these smells could be signs that there's contamination. Uh, if water has debris or things floating in it, if there's big chunks in there, there's probably uh, microscopic proto or uh, bacteria or protozoa in the water also. So be aware of that. Water is brown, yellow, or black. Uh, fifth, the water may look and smell clean, but be aware that colorless and odorless chemicals can be present. Uh, these chemicals can only be discovered with chemical testing. Uh, how do I test my water to see if it's safe to drink? Uh, there's a multitude of in-home water test kits that you can purchase. Uh, companies like Culligan uh, will test your water for a price. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, county health departments will test for bacteria and nitrates. If you want like a full spectrum test on your water, um, you can go to the EPA link down below and they have a list of um, certified uh, laboratories uh, by state. And so you can actually get the information to contact them and see what the costs are and, and what you have to do. How much water should I store? I don't know how this got stuck in here. This is a kind of redundant. We already talked about this. Uh, store at least a three days worth of water for emergencies. For one person, a three day supply is three gallons. Not enough in my personal opinion, but um, you definitely want to have some water on hand, some emergency water on hand. Six reasons to store water for an emergency or a natural disaster. Basically, what are you going to use the water for? Okay, you're going to use it for hygiene. So you need it to clean your body, you need it to wash your hands, wash your face, wash your hair. And if it's only three days, you're probably not going to be doing anything but washing, you know, your hands and maybe your face, but depending on how much water you store. And you can reduce the amount of water you use for hygiene in an emergency by stocking antibacterial wipes and waterless soap. Uh, sanitation, you need clean water to maintain, san maintain sanitation. Um, reduce sanitation water usage by using... A five-gallon plastic bucket, uh, contractor-grade plastic bag, and sawdust as a porta potty. Uh, with this method, you have to use—you uh, don't have to use water to flush, but you can still maintain sanitation. Hydration—that's the most important thing. You need a minimum of a half gallon of water per person per day to stay hydrated. 
you know, if you're chopping wood, if you're building something, if you're digging holes for something, or if you're gardening and it's hot out, you, you're probably going to drink more than half, half a gallon of water uh, per day. Cooking, uh, you need water to cook staple items like white rice, rolled oats, instant soups, etc. To reduce or eliminate the need for cooking water, uh, um, store foods that don't require water like canned soups and other non-perishables. Uh, gardening, this is more of a long-term survival thing, and it may seem a little bit strange, but depending on your climate, you may wish to incorporate rainwater or another form of catchment into your emergency plan so you can keep your vegetable garden going in case of drought or water loss. Again, especially important for long-term survival situation. So have your emergency crop irrigation worked out before the tap runs dry. Your pets, dogs, cats, chickens, horses, hamsters, plan to store enough water for your pets and your livestock. This is pretty straightforward, 10 easy steps to fill an emergency water barrel. Um, location is pretty important because once it's filled, it's 459 pounds and you're not moving it. So place your bottle or your barrel uh, where you need the barrel, where you're going to leave the barrel before you fill it with water. Um, place your barrel on crates or wood to ensure no chemical interaction between concrete and plastic. Uh, remove the bung plug with a bung wrench. Pick a hose. It suggests that you use a food grade hose. I use regular garden hose. Uh, clean your barrel inside and out, including the bung area and plug. I used all purpose unscented bleach for this purpose. Fill the 55 gallon polypropylene barrel with clean potable water. Remove the fill hose. Disinfect your hands, the bung, the bung area, and the bung wrench with a bleach solution. Water treatment. If water isn't chlorinated, add a quarter teaspoon of calcium hypochlorite pool shock or two tablespoons of unscented bleach to the 55 gallon barrel. Uh, some people are going to choose to treat water when they use it instead of when they store it. And that's completely up to you how you're going to do that. And you might be thinking, again, this kind of goes back to the chemical contamination idea. Uh, you can't, if you get chemicals in your well or in your groundwater or your water supply and you don't have reverse osmosis or another system to remove that the chemicals, you're not going to have any water. But if you have water that may have a little some biological agents in it, you can boil it, you can filter it, and those are more readily available methods of cleaning your drinking water, emergency drinking water. And then place the cap on top of the barrel and tighten. And don't tighten that uh, bung plug too much because uh, it will actually strip out. How do you remove water from a 55-gallon barrel? I, just because of convenience, I bought my water barrel and a... Uh, um, a hand pump from Uline, uh, probably not the cheapest way to go, but it was convenient for me. You can do a Google search and um, find the, the best way for you to empty water. Some people put taps in their barrels and get them up off the ground. Um, but for me, I used a hand pump. And this here is a video of me emptying the water barrel when I was leaving New Jersey to uh, so I could uh, load it onto the truck. Top tips for storing emergency water in a vehicle. Um, you know, when I'm thinking of this, it seems like this stuff is not related, but when I'm thinking of the, you know, the whole emergency SHTF or Tiatwaki uh, situation, you know, we don't really know what the scenario is. You're going to be bugging in, you're going to be bugging out. If you're bugging out, are you walking out? Are you going out in a vehicle? So I wanted to cover some of that stuff just so you would be thinking about it. So top tips for storing emergency water in a vehicle. The long-term storage of water in a vehicle is crucial because you never know when your car will break down or when you'll have to hit the road in an emergency or natural disaster. You can just throw a case of water in your car, and that may work, but there are better options for the extreme conditions inside of a vehicle. Storing emergency water in your vehicle in hot climates, I think that's probably the most challenging. The logical choice for vehicle water storage seems like it would be the inexpensive uh, prepackaged water bottles that we get at the grocery store, but they aren't the best option for long-term water storage in a vehicle. So <clears throat> if you want to use them, you got to be cognizant of what the weather's like and how long you're storing them for. But me personally, I, you know, if you've ever left your water on the dash or in the console in a car in 100 degree weather and then come in and come back into the car and taking a swig of that hot water, you can just tell that when you taste it that it's just not right. So uh, this goes to the point when superheated plastic bottles leach chemicals into your water called BPA. If the bottles are BPA free, they still leach other chemicals into the water. BPA is an industrial chemical called bisphenol A. It's controversial. 
leaches uh, from some plastics under certain conditions like extreme heat. It causes water to taste off and may have adverse, uh, adverse health effects. I'm not a doctor and I'm not giving you medical advice. Nine emergency water containers to store in a hot vehicle. Um, I, I'm a fan of stainless steel of all types. So it's expensive, but it lasts forever. And if you get the right kind, it's multi-use. So here's just here's some examples so that you can do some of your own uh, research. Uh, stainless Nalgene, clean canteens, uh, just regular BPA-free Nalgene bottles, military surplus canteens, um, USGI cold weather canteens, Arctic canteen. Uh, these Scepter 5-gallon jugs seem to be pretty popular. It's like a, a military uh, uh, jerry can style. Single-walled stainless steel canteens and bottles. A good place to look for these stainless steel, the single-walled canteens, uh, to look for information and reviews is uh, do like backpacking type searches on YouTube uh, because this is uh, preferred by a lot of through hikers. That's what they use because you can not only drink water, but you can also um, boil food on a campfire. You just want to make sure when you get the single-walled canteen that it's rated to be used uh, with heat. Uh, Prepackaged emergency water, including Mylar bags, which I've read about, but it doesn't sound, I don't know. I've never, I've never done it. Uh, Mylar bags, boxes, cans, and BPA-free plastic bottles. I'm not a fan of prepackaged emergency water. It's expensive. You don't get a lot of water for the money. But I can see how it would work into a plan. You know, maybe you just have a case of cans in your car. That might work. Um, but instead, I'd spring for stainless steel single wall containers that are multi-purpose, reusable, and last for years. Fact, if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I, 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside of a vehicle, interior temperatures can reach 130 to 170 degrees um, due to the greenhouse effect. And we saw earlier, 125 degrees in the bottle start leaching chemicals. So cold climate, emergency water storage for your vehicle. If you think your canteen or water bottle, water bottle is going to freeze in your car, uh, only fill it uh, three quarters full to leave room for expansion. Again, we're talking about cold climate water storage, emergency water storage in a vehicle. Um, consider keeping a small hiker stove with fuel and store uninsulated single walled stainless steel containers in your vehicle. When I say the hiker stove, don't ever burn a hiker stove or any other kind of stove or internal combustion, anything inside of a car or any enclosed space. Uh, this sounds obvious, but people die every year uh, from doing that. So do not use, if you've got a hiker's stove to melt your water in your stainless steel canteen or to cook some soup, do it outside of the vehicle. Don't do it inside. So you could melt frozen water and you could cook, say, some top ramen. Eight emergency, uh, eight emergency vehicle water containers to store in freezing temperatures. Uh, stainless Nalgene, clean canteen, single-walled stainless steel canteens and bottles, military surplus canteen, heavy-duty glass containers are an option, but you just have to make sure that they're, they don't get damaged and that you keep them away from sunlight. Uh, I've seen quite a bit of suggestions on the survival forums that you put them inside of a cooler without ice, of course, and like wrap them in a blanket or a Mylar blanket. Emergency water and Mylar bags, boxes, or BPA-free plastic bottles. Store-bought plastic water bottles. If you decide to go this route, store half-liter water water bottles inside a one-gallon Ziploc freezer bag. So if they, when they start to um, let's uh, thaw out, they don't burst and get water all over your car. Tip: Don't use a stove or campfire to heat an insulated or multi-walled thermos or stainless bottle. Heat may damage the lining of the bottle. That's why um, I'm suggesting the single-walled uh, camper or backpacker style um, stainless thermos. Water containers that are not opti optimum for long-term storage in a vehicle, glass, because it breaks. You know, maybe you can fit that into your, um, you know, your bug out in your vehicle. Just be aware that glass is pretty dangerous in a vehicle. Uh, thin plastic water bottles you buy at the grocery store. We already kind of talked about that. Uh, canned water may burst in heat or cold, even though some of it's advertised that it won't. You can try that out and see how it works for you. But anytime I've had a soda can or anything like that in a car, of course, it's carbonated. So, yeah, so that may work. You'll have to test it out. Uh, so canned water, uh, plastics. Don't use plastic water bottles that contain BPAs in a hot environment or plastic bottles that aren't food safe. 
Nine emergency water storage tips for your vehicle. Make sure your water is secure so it can't fly around if you get in an accident. Uh, if you store your water in your trunk, use a net, bungee cord, or storage container to keep bottles from flying around. If you're taking a road trip or traveling through remote territory, bring a lot of potable water and whatever containers are handy. You know, if you're in the car with the water and it's not like a long-term storage type of thing, it doesn't really matter what kind of water container you use as long as it's, uh, you know, it's secured. Water insulation, place water containers in a soft or hard-sided cooler with no ice or wrap in a wool mylar blanket. Water filter, I'm a big fan of water filters. I think it's the go-to and it's my backup. Um, you know, a, a small Sawyer or Caden and water filter weighs two to six ounces. They're super lightweight. Life straws seem to be popular right now. And uh, just keep them in your vehicle. I have life straws in each one of my vehicles. And uh, they're not great for processing water for things like cooking and stuff, but they're good for hydration. You know, you've got a way to drink water out of a stream. Um, not great, not a great option if you're in an area where there's no natural water source. Stainless steel water bottles are preferred. They don't explode. They don't leach chemicals. They're tough and they're multi-purpose. Water treatment tablets, they are what they are. They're pretty simple. They're lightweight. I personally don't like putting any more chemicals in my water than I have to, but they're definitely a lightweight option. Backpacker stove and fuel, uh, store in your trunk in cold climates. Don't store fuel in your vehicle in a hot environment. Um, it's useful if you're using stainless steel to melt frozen water and for cooking ramen. Don't use it inside your car. Don't use a fuel, fuel stove or a camp stove or any kind of stove inside your vehicle. Um, this is another idea I saw. I, I don't know if it'll work or not, but I saw it, so I'll throw that in there. Uh, hand warmers, I've seen it suggested that you can wrap a frozen can or bottle in a blanket with a hand warmer to thaw. I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it'll work. It sounds questionable to me, but you know what? If you don't have any other options, uh, it might get you enough water off the top of your bottle to, you know, to get a drink. The best water storage container for vehicle, vehicle bug out, you probably know by now, I'm a huge fan of the single walled stainless steel canteen or water bottle because... It doesn't leach anything into the water. They're super hardy. You can use them in heat as long as they're certified for that. You can cook in them, uh, and they last virtually forever. How long will water store in a 55-gallon drum? I set up above five-plus years, but this goes back to the idea of does moderate water spoil or... Let me back up. This goes back to the idea, does water go bad? No, water doesn't ever go bad. It just gets contaminated and needs to be cleaned. So, <clears throat> it depends on how you want to look at this. If you, if you, a 55-gallon drum will store indefinitely as long as it's free of chemicals. You can uh, clean any kind of uh, biological agents out of that water by filtering or boiling. So, it's kind of a double-edged sword or a double-edged answer. I don't know what the word for it would be, but if you just want to keep you know, occasionally putting bleach in your water and then pump it right out of the barrel and know that it's going to be drinkable. You know, as long as you're following um, cleanliness procedures, you're, you know, keeping everything sterilized, a blue water barrel is going to last you five, five plus years. If, however, you're just dumping uh, municipal water in there, it's already got chlorine, and you plan on processing it on the back end, then that water is going to last, well, how long? I mean, I th forever sounds crazy, but uh, I think the water would probably outlast the container that it's in. Let's just put it that way. So you have to decide what you want to do. You're going to rely on the processing on the front end so you can just take it out and drink it, or are you going to do it on the front end, not pay too much attention to it, and just know that when you take it out, you're either going to boil it or filter it. So if you find the mer your emergency water is contaminated with biological agents five years down the road, you can treat it with unscented bleach, pool shock, or boil it when you need it. Having water to clean is a considerable asset. I know I'm beating this with a, like a dead horse, but if you wait to fill your water jugs, your emergency water storage, until after a storm, until after there's a hurricane, after there's a flood, and groundwater goes in and around these, you know, chemical plants and manufacturing plants and whatever's on the ground and whatever's on the roadway is going to wash off, end up in the groundwater, end up in your well. The chemicals are in there. And if you don't have a way to do reverse osmosis, 
um, or one of the other methods, which I'll talk about down below, your water is dirty. You can't fix it. Now, if you already have clean municipal water that you stored and then it gets a biological agent into it, you're gonna, it's going to be much easier for you to process it on the back end because you're going to be able to do it with the methods that are much more available to you know 99% of us, boiling water or have a way to fil uh, filter the water in place. So how do you store water for the longest shelf life? Store in a sterilized container like 55-gallon blue barrel. Make sure you're disinfecting your hands, anything that comes in contact with water by using bleach and water solution to sterilize. Uh, make sure water is free of chemical and biological contamination before storing. Use food grade containers. Store water in a cool, dry environment far away from any solvents or chemicals. Ensure containers are sealed and the water is protected from contaminants. And keep water containers away from sunlight. It breaks down the plastic and causes growth in your water. Hmm, that's a typo. I'm actually seeing all kinds of typo here, typos here, folks. Uh, do I need to add bleach or pool shock to my emergency water? If your emergency water isn't chlorinated, you need to treat it with unscented bleach or pool shock before storing it or before you use it. Most municipal or city water comes out of a tap chlorinated, so it isn't necessary to chlorinate it before you store it. But I would like before I was on a well, so my water came out of the ground uh, chlorinated. I'm going to miss that water. I'll tell you what, it was really... Uh, it was really good water. Like I, I drank out of the faucet. I didn't drink bottled water. But here in Florida, I'm going to be drinking out of a bottle. I think. There are other options. Uh, you can plan on boiling water or filtering it as you remove it from your containers. But this is less convenient. You may, uh, and maybe more difficult in an emergency situation. To learn about treating uh, stored emergency water, check out Ready Squirrel's comprehensive article, Can Clorox Bleach use, Be Used to Purify Drinking Water? Again, I talk about um, using bleach and using pool shock to purify your water, and I have uh, charts with the ratios. Nine emergency water storage containers, commercially packaged bottled water, reclaimed plastic bottles, sterilized for water storage. Uh, for budget concerns, you may have to go this route, but ask yourself if you're being penny-wise, pound-foolish. It's really hard to get the flavor of juice and soda out of pet um, food grade plastic bottles, and I would not definitely not use milk jugs. I know some people do, but uh, I, I, I just don't think you can get them clean. Only store water in pre-used decontaminated container if you know what was in it before using it for water storage. Um, nine emergency water storage containers, option three, 3.5 gallon water bricks, stackable and robust. 5-gallon water storage cubes, 15-gallon barrels, 45-gallon barrels, 55-gallon blue barrels, 100-gallon um, 100, 100 bathtub tote. This is kind of if you know stuff's coming. This isn't something that you would store for long term. Uh, this is like kind of more reactionary. Like you know a hurricane's going to hit, you know, in four hours or tomorrow. You can get these emergency totes that you basically just put in your bathtub and fill with water, which... You know, you might be thinking, well, why don't I just fill my bathtub with water? But if your bathtub is like my bathtub and then I have kids and stuff, and uh, I guess you could. You just, you'd probably want to clean the bathtub out before you filled it with water if you had the time. So, 275-gallon uh, IBC tote and 330-gallon IBC tote. These are those square uh, plastic totes that have um, metal, like metal wire around them. You can get them on Craigslist. Uh, you can get them from some food manufacturers. Just know what's in them and know that once they're full, you're not moving them. Mylar bags stuffed in five-gallon buckets. Uh, Mylar breaks easy, so this probably isn't something that I would do, but it is an op know it's an option. Seven large water storage tanks options for emergency water. Food-grade plastic uh, water storage tanks. Fiberglass water storage tank, uh, carbon steel water storage tank, pillow tanks. Uh, these come in sizes from 25 gallons all the way up to 20,000 gallons uh, storage capacity. Uh, smaller units fit nicely in the bed of a truck, but make sure you check uh, your uh, truck payload before you go fill in one of those because it, it could be over the payload. Uh, steel tank bolted uh, up to 150,000 gallons. Corrugated steel, precast concrete. I basically put these here so you'd have terms to look up and do research on. A lot of these um, um, these type of storage units are used by people that uh, farm or ranch, deal with livestock on a larger scale. And also a lot of off-grid uh, folks use these kind of containers. 
Top four lightweight emergency water filters for bugging out on foot. Uh, backpackers water filters. Not a method of storage, but instead a way to treat water when you're hiking out on foot. Even the small filters like the Surrey Mini will filter up to 100,000 gallons of, gallons of water. And if you look down here, you're basically getting out, you know, something that weighs two to six ounces is going to get 99.9% .9 of bacteria and protozoa out of the water. So some of the things that you see a lot on the AT or you hear a lot about are the Giardia, the Cryptosporidium, uh, E. coli, and what was the other one? Yeah, I guess it was cryptosporidium. Anyway, it's just stuff that gets into the water from animal poo and stuff like that. So you want to make sure it won't. It, it, well, I'm not. A, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say anything about that. But if you get any of these bugs, it's like, yeah, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So in a bug out on foot scenario, you're not going to be able to carry much more water than a gallon, uh, and I think even that's questionable. Not too long ago, I did the Vermont section of the um, Appalachian Trail. I think it was uh, was it, I don't know, 110 to 140 miles. I don't. I'd have to look it up, but you know, I depended for 10 days on nothing but my Sawyer Mini. Like that's how. Um, that's basically how I got my water, and <clears throat> kind of an interesting scenario. When I went in, I had a bunch of platypus bags. I was worried. I was really worried about water. I wasn't so much worried about food. And so I probably had about 30 pounds of water in my pack going in, thinking I was going to, you know, I was going to manhandle it. I tell you what, five miles in, I made the decision, decision well, I'm going to dump out these platypus crushable packs. I'm going to dump the water out because this pack is killing me. That's five miles in. I'm not, I'm not a Superman. I'm not an enduro racer or anything, but I'm in decent shape for my age. And it was killing me. So I'm thinking the thought process was, well, I'm in what they call vermood in the AT hiking world. And that is that, uh, Vermont gets a ton of rain at certain during certain times of the year, and it happened to be when I was there. So I expected water to not only be plentiful, but to actually be a nuisance, like to the point where I, I figured I'd be hiking in like six inches to a foot of mud in some of the spots. Well, unbeknownst to me and shame on me, I didn't know that they were going through a drought. And so when I uh, dumped that water out, all I had on me was my personal Nalgene bottle. I, I, of course, kept that. And uh, me and the person I was hiking with ran out of water. And I don't know, we had to go on like, I, I, it's honestly, it seemed like 10 miles. It was probably another five miles. But if you know anything about the AT, it's up all the time like you're there's like almost no flat areas you almost are never relaxing so you're almost always grinding so just going five miles you're you're wiped out and if you're doing it without water you go into that stage of cotton mouth so i we've finished the water and then i end up at a um a beaver pond a nasty beaver pond like you know beaver pond in quotes don't drink from a beaver pond avoid, avoid that nasty stagnant water well i ended up um there was an area like just to the left of the path that had rocks and it almost kind of wor was working at it. Well, visually it was working to purify the water somewhat. So we uh, used our, our Sawyer min minis to uh, filter water from that area. And uh, I didn't get sick. And I honestly expected to get sick. And I didn't, I filtered all my water on the trail uh, for 10 days and I never got sick and wh what's my point I think if, if you know if you haven't done any hiking or camping or any kind of survival stuff I think it's a little bit scary maybe a little bit off-putting to think about drinking from water that you filter from a stream or river or lake uh, granted it's not going to get out chemicals but you know there's no way you're you are going to carry enough water for a long-term bug out on foot situation it is impossible so you've got a plan to filter they're cheap they work so check them out and i like the sawyer mini because it's what i'm used to it's what i've always used these life straws are extremely popular and they're very inexpensive i've got these in my vehicles honestly i've never used one i should probably do a review the life straw uh, only um Purifies a thousand gallons, but you know what? That's quite a bit of water. Uh, the Sawyer Squeeze, the Sawyer Mini, the Sawyer Micro—they'll all uh, filter out a hundred thousand gallons of water. So that's that's a little tiny item that weighs like two to six ounces, and you can filter that much water with it. 
So the downside of these smaller units is they're not great for processing like for a field camp. So if you had a family of four and you know, you're going to set up like a, um, like a cowboy kitchen and you want to be able to process water for, to have a running kitchen with sanitation and, you know, you're cooking grains or rice and stuff like that and having like a mess hall for the family. You're going to want to look into getting something like a gravitation filter that filters water in like one to five gallon, uh, um, at a pop, you know, it's more bulk because these Sawyer minis do take some work and they take a little bit of time to purify the water. Okay. So I'm beating a dead horse, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm seriously amazed by these little guys. It just blows my mind. Okay, portable water storage when bugging out in a vehicle. These are just some suggestions to kind of get the juices flowing. Uh, if it were me, I'd have water to throw my vehicle, but if possible, I would rely on filtering water if it's readily available. So, yeah, I would throw in some, you know, I'd have some uh, plastic water bottles, uh, store-bought, staged, and ready to throw in the vehicle, but um, I would rely long-term on filtering. So some ideas, uh, portable water storage and bugging out, five-gallon jerry cans, water brick, water jug, uh, store package, clear water bottles, again, water filtration system or systems, empty water containers to hold filtered water, something like Nalgene bottles, canteens, or some other water storage cup or glass. I like the idea of using single-walled stainless steel canteen that is rated for use on a campfire. That way I'm building in redundancy because not only can I if I'm doing both, I get double whammy. I can filter the water if I have to, but then I can also boil water for three minutes in my canteen and drink it. And I can also cook top ramen and stuff as long as I get that single wall that's rated for heat. Methods to remove chemicals from emergency drinking water. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where groundwater is contaminated from chemicals, such as during water surges from a hurricane, you'll have to remove the chemicals before drinking the water. So dis distillation, water is cleaned by boiling and capturing the water vapor. Uh, most distillation systems um, will remove common chemical contaminants like arsenic, barium, cadmium, chromium, lead, nitrate, etc. There are distillation units that are like backpacker sized. I've seen some of them on YouTube. That would actually be a pretty cool video. I don't have one, but that may actually be something that I'll do a video on at some point. But I don't have one. But just know there are little mini distillation units you can use over a campfire to distill water. Uh, another way to remove chemicals is reverse osmosis. Uh, it's a pretty complicated process, and there's more than one filter in a reverse osmosis system, and I'm not a professional, but it's not straightforward, like getting biological agents out with like a Sawyer Mini. It's a full-blown like um, bug-in type of a situation if you're using reverse osmosis. So if you don't have that system in place prior to water contamination, um, there's no, that I know of, there's no little mini pocket system, reverse osmosis system that you can use. So again, reverse osmosis is like hard pipe, something you'd have in your house. Nano filtration, moderate effectiveness. So in my mind, or moderate effectiveness in removing chemicals. So in my mind, it doesn't work. Um, filtering methods that do not remove chemicals from emergency drinking water, uh, ultralight water, ultraviolet water treatment is not effective and boiling water. I wanted to say that they boiling water actually increases the amount of chemicals in, in a certain volume of water because as the water evaporates, the chemicals are left behind. And so you have less and less, uh, water, which increases the concentration of chemicals available or present. So here's some good uh, resources, a guide to drinking water treatment technologies for household use center, uh, from the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, choose home water filters and other water treatment systems also from the CDC. And the, this one, it's an article called Water, kind of simple, but it's basically emergency water. Uh, and that link goes over to uh, ready.gov. So that's all, all I've got to say today, guys. I appreciate you guys sitting here and listening to me, Gab. And I hope everybody's uh, happy and safe. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks again. Have a great day.